In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the necessary software required to observe or control on VATSIM in the UK, namely the latest supported version of Euroscope, version 3.2.3, .3, the UK controller pack, and the audio for VATSIM standalone client. I will also demonstrate basic usage of the software to an extent required to observe. The links to the download pages will be included in the video description as well as timestamps to various sections of this tutorial. So, without further ado, let's get going. So, uh, the way I recommend uh, following through the process is there's a README included in the UK controller pack which explains exactly what to do. So the first thing to do is to download the UK controller pack, which is hosted on the VATSIM UK forum. So we'll go to the VATSIM UK forum community.fatsum.uk it's under operations UK sector file and controller pack UK controller pack and uh, scroll down until we find the latest version which is usually posted at the bottom version 2023.05 is available and that was only released about a week or so ago so I'll click on that list of changes we'll just press download this file which downloads a zip and here we go this is the uh, let's put it into my downloads this the UK folder and the readme so we just want to open the readme it's a PDF you can see this uh, release the 18th, so a week ago. We're just going to follow this top to bottom, step by step, and uh, hopefully, if we do all that, we'll get a working version of Euroscope. So you need to have the latest full release version of Euroscope. Now, there's, I think, a slight error here. If you hover over that link, you can see it says uh, the, the Euroscope setup 3.2 at the end, .msi. But if you read the next sentence, at time of writing, we currently recommend installing version 3.2.3 .3 available from here. And you hover over that one and you get a link to installation. So we click that link. And the download is actually 3.2.3.msi. So we're going to install, download that installer. And it's in, important, this is actually important in the uh, previous paragraph, so I'm skipping ahead a bit. So uh, if you had a previous version before 3.2.2 uh, you need to save your important files and uninstall the previous version to make a clean install now I've already done that I don't have any your scopes installed on this machine but if you've not done that you do need to do that um, and this thing about update I'll mention later on but so, so now we'll just download this uh, it's already putting it in a decent folder for me I have actually already in downloaded this so save and I'll replace it just to make sure I've got the most recent one and then I can open that now it will come up with a pop-up saying Windows protected your PC uh, because it's an unknown publisher but I'll run anyway because I know that I trust this uscope.hu website um, and then just follow the installation wizard it's very simple. I'm going to do this for everyone. It's going to go to Program Files x86 Euroscope and install. Do you want to allow this app to make changes from an unknown publisher? Yes, I do. And done. Now, strangely on here, the installation step comes before the prerequisite. So it says download that. You kind of download it and automatically run through it like I did. It says before installing your Euroscope, make sure you download and install the latest C++ redistributable package from Microsoft. So you do have to do that. I know that I've already got that installed because I installed that uh, recently. If you haven't done that, then to do that, and it's probably better to do it before the step I just did. So sorry if that's confused you. And then uh, you can see this, uh, the rest of this page is just explaining what we just did. Literally just clicking next and close. So very straightforward. That is your Euroscope installed. So, if we go back to the README, 
As newer versions of your scope become available, functions may not work as expected. Support will only be provided for the version noted above. That's fine, that's the one we've installed. It is worth saying that I'm following through this readme on the grounds that as time goes by, hopefully this will be updated if new versions are released that are supported. So do check the readme and make sure you get the correct version. Don't just assume that the latest version is supported. Euroscope working directory. So wherever you start Euroscope from, whether it be the start menu or shortcut, you need to ensure that the folder documents slash Euroscope is the starting folder. Um, it doesn't have to be documents slash Euroscope, but that's probably the easiest thing. Some people now it's 3.2.3 are ta talking about using uh, app data instead, which is where it actually creates the Euroscope folder but that's a bit more difficult to get to, it's a hidden file and things. So there's no problem as long as you set it, the starting directory to be the same place as you have the UK pack folder. So we'll, we'll follow the readme because that's what it's telling us to do and it works. So we'll right click the shortcut. So we first want the shortcut. So let me just minimize these, go to your scope that's the app right click open file location this will take me to where the program is installed it is a shortcut already um, on the start menu but I want to show more options and send to desktop create shortcut just to make this easier and then here it is I'm going to go to properties and this is just following through what it says to do here. So right click the shortcut, select properties under the shortcut tab, ensure that the starting directory matches your documents slash your scope location, which is just going to be the location that we put the UK controller pack in. So you can see C slash users in this case it was Luke, documents your scope. I don't think I actually have a folder called that, so I'm just going to create that folder first. So documents, new folder, your scope. And the reason I'm doing this is because in the older uh, installations of your scope, it created that folder, but um, it doesn't do that anymore because it goes into app data instead, like I said. Now, as you can see, I'm actually using uh, OneDrive here, I realize in retrospect. I I didn't exactly follow the readme, which would have used C slash users slash uh, my name and then slash your escape. I'm using my OneDrive documents instead. Uh, it, they both work as long as you copy that link into the starting directory of the properties of your scope. So what I'm going to do is uh, copy that path and go back to the starting location shortcut starting instead of update roaming replace it with this press apply and okay and I am just going to pin that to my taskbar just so I don't have to come back to here and now it's pinned to the taskbar. I think I should be able to delete it from the desktop. I'll just put it there. Right, so we've set the starting directory. Good. And then please ensure the this option is unticked, the auto load on startup before loading the controller pack. This option is accessible within your scope under other settings menu. So let's go and do that now. It's this uh, this one here in this uh, screenshot. I'll, I'll just read on a bit before we do this. It is also recommended that you untick auto save profile on exit under the same menu. So we'll just make sure these two boxes are unticked in other settings in your scope. So we'll start your scope. It's asking to open a profile file, we'll cancel that the first time. Get that lovely noise. And then 
other set, they're both unticked, that's good. So that's fine, we can then close your escape again. Yes, I want to exit, and we can cancel all. Once you've done this, quit your scope, and, you, and when you load it again, you'll be asked for profile file. Microsoft Visual C++ Redistributable. This plugin, the plugins included in this package, sorry, require the latest C++ Redistributables to function. Please download and install them from here before opening any of the profiles. Now, I've already done this. I don't need to do that, but if you haven't got them, do do that. Click that link, follow the exit. It's fairly simple. Now, for first-time users, it will require a key. We'll follow. We'll get to that bit when when we've loaded the plugin. It's hand, it should all happen automatically. There should be a pop-up we just follow. So don't worry about that step until we've done the next step. So in the zip folder that came with this pack, that's this one. There's this UK folder here. So. It is required that you install the pack into documents slash your scope to do with a sector file auto update and module. Uh, so that just wants to go into documents slash your scope. So we'll copy that. Oops. Into documents your scope, paste it here. I'll just read on while it's doing that. When you've unzipped this file, to project it as unzipped into the correct place, you can check, for example, by locating documents, your scope, UK, observer, observer, underscore, echo, golf, Sierra, Sierra, that's the standard observer profile. So we'll just check that one, UK. Observer, and there it is, perfect. So that's that installed into the correct location. So I can close that now, come back to the PDF, loading up and observing basic usage. I think this is easier if I just show you from this point now. So when we open your scope, we'll be met with this uh, open profile file. I think the first time you do this, it'll probably default to being somewhere like here, maybe. And you'll see all these different places for the different profiles we have for the UK controller pack. I'm going to choose somewhere that has online ATCs. Let me just check where that is. So I'm just going to Fantastic, which is a website I use to check online ATC. Bear with me. In the UK. Heathrow, Gatwick, and Southampton. So I'll go to Gatwick, why not? So I'll open the Gatwick folder, and then you can see this, there's four different profiles here. There's the approach profile, the ATM, the uh, aerodrome traffic monitor profile, the combined profile, which has the approach, and the SMR, which is the surface movement radar. I'm just going to observe the surface for now, so I'll open the SMR. And this is the UKCP, the UK controller plugin this time, rather than pack. Um, performed first time download. This download will run the UKCP data to install the core plugin. Press OK to continue. That's exactly what you want to do. Click OK. A new version is available. Would you like to update? Yes, of course you would. Has been updated. I can view the change log. I don't want to bother. Your web browser will now open and you'll be asked for the, in, to log in to the UK Controller plugin website to set up your API credentials. These credentials will allow you, the plugin to access various data sources to perform certain actions such as assign squawks to aircraft. Skipping this set will mean that many core features of the UK Controller plugin will not work as expected. So you want to press OK. Sign in via UK Core. It's also filled my password for me. Log in. UK controller plugin API key received successfully. You may now close this window. 
that is how easy that is that's very straightforward and when you come back to your scope you can see magically Gatwick has appeared on the surface movement radar so that's great that's your scope set up and working and you can view things so now we want to see some aircraft so to do that we click connect director that sim is automatically filled in that's all good the call sign if we're just observing will be there's a drop down for the controller call signs but if you're just observing it's your initials in my case Papa Lima Mike underscore OBS your facility is observer rating is S well observer if you're just an observer otherwise whatever thing you are so I'm in S2 so I'm going to select S2 server now is either automatic or sweat box to see live traffic on the network it'll always be automatic so that's what you want to leave it as then you put your name certificates and password in for my name I just use my certificate because that's my preference um, password And then I'm going to press save profile so I don't have to fill this in again next time. You will unfortunately have to do this every time you log on to a different um, profile because these are saved per profile. That's a bit of a pain, but once you've done it once per profile, it's fine. And then you press connect. Now this is the voice communication setup. Don't worry about this if you're just observing because you only use this if you're controlling. If you were controlling, you ju just click the prime button for the relevant frequency and then it would work it all out for you. So I can just close the message by double clicking on them there. And you can see I can't see any aircraft. The reason for that is my visibility isn't centered. If you logged in as a controller, it would automatically know from the beginning of your call sign where you were. The if you were Echo Golf Kilo Kilo underscore Tower, for instance, it would know that you were controlling at Gatwick. It doesn't know that, so we have to type a command in the command line down here. Dot viz for visibility center space Echo Golf Kilo Kilo in capitals for the center of Gatwick Airport, and then press enter, and hopefully some traffic will start to appear. Assuming there is some traffic at Gatwick. There we go. So you can see some aircraft here don't have tags on, some of them do. The reason for that is the uh, whether they're squawking or not. So first up, let's get the list, the departure list set up. So we'll go to the runway setup dialog here. Scroll down to Gatwick, sorted by ICAO code alphabetically. So it's at Gatwick here, and then tick departing and arriving. And you want all of these for all the runways on the left two columns. Then the runway use on the right two columns. I'm not sure what that is. We can check that in a minute, but I'll leave it at 26 left for now. Press OK. OK, it's 050 degrees at 8 knots is the wind, so I'm suspecting it's 08. Right, we can right click on the ATIS, get ATIS, and just check. Runway use 08. Right, so I'll change that. So go back to the runway setup. I can tick show active airports only, which selects just Gatwick 08. Right. Okay, and you can see that this Easy 417 and Easy 53 Victor Quebec are in the list. They will be squawking, the squawks are red. If you want to see the squawks change colour with uh, whether they're squawking or not, there's a setting for that. It's in other settings, general settings, and change correlation mode from C mode to Easy. Press OK, and you can see it goes green because they are squawking. And that's why you can see tags for these two aircraft but can't for this other aircraft. You can only see tags when they're squawking because that's the only way they'd be identified is if they were squawking. If you do want to see their tag you can go to display settings here. In This is called uh, VSMR, it's a plugin. Display, profiles and instead of default change to easy slash observer and you'll get there. No flight plan, run F115. There are other options here, so Gatwick has an option which changes the colour of the tag based on the departure direction, etc. And there's Heathrow, which is more simple. I'll leave it at default for now. Okay, obviously we can't hear anything that's going on at the moment. 
So the next piece of software, which is kind of a standalone piece of software, is called Audio for VATSIM, and that's how we're going to hear what's going on. So we're going to come back to, where is it? Our best friend, your favorite search engine, Google, and get type Audio for VATSIM. Go to the Audio for VATSIM website. We want this for ATC for Euroscope. Step one, download and install later version of Euroscope. Done. Step two, download and install Audio for Vaxim standalone client. Go next. That's fine for me. Install. Do you want to allow it to make changes? Yes, please and finish. Do you want to allow this app to make changes? Yes. And then a new version of Audio for Vatsim Client is available. So the one it installed isn't the latest version. Not quite sure why they don't change that. Anyway, uh, so we update or we'll download the update. Go through it again. Yes. Yes. Install. launch and I'm going to put this here right click pin to taskbar that's my audio for that sim and then I've connected to the network using your scope in the normal way I've shown you that launch the audio for that sim software the first time you run the audio client, open the settings window and calibrate your microphone. When talking the part, bounce into the green band. If it does not, make sure you increase your volume uh, on the slider as required. So settings, that's in CID, that's in password, microphone, excuse me, microphone device, that one, that one for the headset device. And you can see it started bouncing now because I'm speaking. It's a bit low, it's not coming into the green, so I'm going to take the microphone volume up and apply. Still a bit low. Still a bit low, I think. Yeah. Go a bit more. There we go, that's going into the green, if not the red. So apply on that. Okay, optional speaker device I'm going to have as my uh, speakers. Uh, that's so if there's an option, if you step away, you can turn it off your headphones and it'll do your speakers. Um, can be useful I don't use it very much but anyway and then you need a push to talk key I use my right control and then that's fine apply okay don't forget to assign a push to talk key as it says so that's fine that's done so audio for Vatsim is installed minimize that I'm gonna put it down here I'm gonna press connect and you can see it connects as my call sign there on 199.998, that's the default frequency. So if I want to observe as an observer, what I do is press the little plus, type in the call sign I want to observe. In this case, it's going to be whoever nearby Gatwick Tower probably. Akagov Kilo Kilo underscore TWR. Click the tick. And there it adds the uh, frequencies for Gatwick in. I can click the RX here on Gatwick Tower and turn it off for me. And then I'm listening in to Gatwick Tower on 124 decimal 225. So hopefully they'll say something. Would you call 17 Gatwick Tower? Good morning, via Juliet 1, runway 0, try to service wind 0, 5, 0 degrees 8 knots for takeoff. There you go, and that's that working now. So I'll turn that off just so we don't get interrupted. This is the headphone to uh, speaker option, so if I press that option, the audio for Vatsim Audio would come out over the speakers set, uh, the optional speaker setting that I did, rather than over the headphones. I'll leave that on headphones. Um, so yeah, I think that's most of how to observe uh, using your scope once it's set up and audio for Vatsim. Um, there are a few changes to the ATIS, just minimize that and put it down here, 
to the ATISs how they've been done uh, since 3.2.3 your scope version so these four are now the four ATISs you can have so if you click on this first one for instance uh, to connect an ATIS you would select the ATIS you want to connect so let's say we were going to do Gatwick we'd have to scroll down to Echo Golf Kilo Kilo underscore ATIS and press get meta you would populate the meta here and uh, iterate the letter so say if we wanted it to be echo then press test URL and it'll extract the URL from here and fill in the text status and then you would tick the automatically generate new ATIS using URL and you would press connect ATIS so we're obviously not going to do that because we're not controlling but that's how you do that to do an ATIS on the new version of your scope I'm trying to think if there's anything else that might be useful to explain. I think most of the rest of it you get it, uh, taught in your training how to do. Um, yeah. This is uh, Gatwick. Some of you may see it as upside down. Uh, that's because this is the correct orientation that the tower actually use on their displays at Gatwick. So if you did want to rotate it to be north up, for instance, you can go to other settings, display settings, and either true north or magnetic north rather than rotate screen apply and it'll rotate it round press cancel so then if you've made changes like that when you come to close your scope because we turned off in other settings auto save profile and exit it will ask what changes you want to save so if I do that now I'll disconnect from audio for that sim I'll disconnect from VATSIM and then I'll close your scope. Yes, I'm sure I want to exit. I don't want to save the automatically logged session data, that's not relevant. And here you can see it's asking about the Gatwick SMR.ASR has been modified. Do you want to save the changes? And you can see things like display rotation has been changed. So I don't want to save these things because I've not deliberately made those changes so I'm going to press cancel but if you did like the changes you had made you would press save and press cancel the correlation mode is the um, way of seeing the squawks in the list change to easy from uh, C mode and simulation I'm happy with those changes so I press save on those for instance log on profiles I added my observer profile so I'll save that one and then the profile itself has been changed. I would probably save all of those. Um, yeah. And that's yours get close. So I did uh, jump away from the PDF readme earlier. So now we've got everything working. If you're not familiar with an alias or how to switch between ASR views, that kind of thing, that's explained in the readme. So go back to the readme, finish reading it. It's there to help. So, I hope that was a useful tutorial and everything worked. If it didn't, don't despair. Just go to the Vatsim UK website slash Discord link on screen and you can ask all your questions in Neuroscope Help channel. I'm sure somebody will be happy to help. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you next time.